David R. Guttery is an investment advisory representative of Emeritus Investment Corporation and president of Keystone Financial Group in Trustville, Alabama. Please stay tuned through the end of the video for additional important disclosure information. Hello everyone, I'm Brandon Dawkins, joined today by David Guttery, president of Keystone Financial Group here in Trustville, for a discussion on personal money management and the need for emergency funds. David, we've always heard how important it is to save for a rainy day, but in the area of professional financial planning, what does that look like for your clients? Money management involves several things. It involves everything from the creation of a budget, to the maintenance of emergency cash reserves. Some of us live rigidly by our budget constraints, and others merely check the balance at the end of the month to see if there's anything left. Most of us fall somewhere in the middle. From a financial planning standpoint, though, having a budget is critical. How can you know where you're going if you don't know where you are? All plans that we make for retirement investments, to college investments, to risk management, must be accommodated within the budget. We can't plan for these goals with any degree of certainty unless we not only have a budget, but also follow that budget. So budgeting is a critical component of holistic money management, but what advice do you share with clients about emergency reserves and planning for those unforeseen events? That's another critical aspect of money management the provision for and the maintenance of emergency cash reserves is no less important than contributing to your retirement plan. Unfortunately, many people couldn't withstand a financial emergency that might disrupt income for any length of time because they haven't prepared for such emergencies. Now, there are some rules of thumb numbers out there, such as three times your monthly income that should be held in reserve, but in reality, that number is going to be different for everyone. Rates of interest on cash savings remains very low. Are there any strategies that you employ with clients to maximize their potential yield on cash savings? Yes. As I am working with clients in this regard, we look at the need for such reserves and then we evaluate your level of comfort. Sometimes clients would just feel that much more comfortable with having excess reserves. In such cases, we break cash down into two sleeves. One sleeve is readily accessible, principally guaranteed, and without regard for yield. I honestly don't care what might be the yield or the rate of interest on this sum of money. The only purpose that this sleeve of cash has is to just exist and to be there in a place where you can lay hands on it within 10 minutes. The other sleeve of cash may be placed where it's liquid, but somewhere other than a money market or savings account where yields might be a bit higher. It's still considered an emergency reserve though. Such sources of income could be found with floating rate mutual funds or exchange traded funds, for example. Another often overlooked place for solid cash reserves might be the cash value of your life insurance policy. At a high level, there are many alternative places where we can seek safety and maximize yield when it comes to this sleeve of cash. Can clients make a material impact on their level of savings and provision of cash reserves through the management of credit? Absolutely. Leveraging strategies are a cornerstone of the holistic approach to money management. We work with clients to devise strategies for the elimination of what I call toxic debt, which would include credit cards with revolving interest. We seek to lean more heavily on the more favorable forms of leverage until such time that it can be completely eliminated from the money management part of the plan. As this is unfolding, cash flow is generally improving, and thus we can direct increasingly greater sums of cash to build or supplement emergency reserves. How do you incentivize clients to focus on budgeting and encourage them to become less reliant upon credit? In the world of financial planning, relativity is a fantastic tool for that kind of clarity. For example, we might evaluate the purchase of a given thing in terms of its current impact upon cash flow and alternatively, 
through the use of credit. When a client can clearly see that a $1,000 purchase is really a $1,845 purchase over five years at 13%, then the relative utility of that thing becomes clear. Is it truly worth the total real cost? Not only nominally, but also in terms of lost opportunity cost in the form of interest that could have otherwise been had, for example. I incentivize clients to make good money management decisions through the relative analysis of to buy or not to buy. David, thanks so much, as always, for that very helpful information. For additional information, David may be reached through the means listed upon the following screen. For the Trustful Tribune, I'm Brandon Dawkins. David R. Guttery independently offers securities and investment advisory services through Emeritus Investment Corporation, member FINRA and SIPC. AIC and Keystone Financial Group are not affiliated. Additional products and services may be available through David R. Guttery or Keystone Financial Group that are not offered through AIC. Some of the products and concepts discussed have their own cost and are subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. These costs and risks will be thoroughly discussed with you prior to any recommendation or solicitation. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. Information provided is gathered from sources believed to be reliable. However, we cannot guarantee their accuracy.